Hi, my name is Jan Basmans. I'm from a small town in north of Belgium called uh, Hestetenberg. Um, and uh, I studied law at the University of Leuven from 2001 to 2006. And uh, I decided to do an LLM in the US at Penn Law, as you can see behind me. And um, it, was, it was great. Uh, I had a really, really good time, both on on an ed uh, from an educational point of view, it was uh, very, very high standing. High, high standing. Uh, it was um, very interesting. It was also uh, personally a very, uh, very worthwhile experience because, um, firstly, you get to meet all of these people from all over the world. So it's not you're mixed in with the with the American JD students, obviously, which is a great help. But you're also mixed in with people from all over the world, so you have a great, great exposure to uh, cultures which are vastly different from from yours. For example, uh, about a third of our class was Chinese, and we had very good interactions with, with our Chinese students. Um, so we learned a lot from them. I hope they learned a little bit from us as well. First of all, it gives you uh, a different point of view on legal matters. So, I mean, Belgium is a civil law country. You only learn civil law concepts and procedures, etc. But there's a large number of countries in the world which don't use civil law, but which are actually common law. So, uh, by doing an LLM in the U.S. and uh, especially at Penn Law, I can't talk about any of the other schools, but at Penn Law you're mixed in with JDs, so you learn how they think, how they study, how they work with common law. And it's very, very valuable because whether you like it or not, uh, on a daily basis, I deal with English or, I mean, British or American lawyers who, you know, often don't have that same experience uh, with, with civil law uh, countries. Uh, so it's very, very useful for me to be able to, you know, s make that switch a little bit at least so that I, so that I, that I can understand what they're thinking, how they're thinking, and hopefully this, this will make it easier for them um, to understand my issues. So if I can translate my issues that I have with, with, with let's say, a contract, uh, my issues, if I can translate them into common law concepts or whatever, it, it may make more sense to them. I mean, in the end, the principles are all the same. It's probably just wording or procedure-wise or something like that. So, um, yeah, that's that's one big asset of, of uh, doing an LLM in general. Um, as I said before, it's also personally a very big asset. It helps you grow as a person. Uh, it makes you become much more independent, uh, much more uh, flexible and open towards others, uh, which in what any, any kind of situation is, is an asset, be it professional or personal, it's, it's uh, always an asset. Um, and doing an LLM at Penn Law specifically for me was, it was, very, very good decision. I had other options, but I'm very happy I got uh, got into Penn Law because it's very interdisciplinary. So I had the option of both doing courses at Penn Law, but also doing courses at Wharton, for example. Uh, I mean, it's always very nice to be able to, uh, to say that to a future employer, like, oh, you know, I went to Wharton. Um, I unfor unfortunately was uh, too young, and I didn't have any work experience to actually qualify for this new Wharton business certificate. I think you need about three years of experience, uh, which I didn't have. Otherwise, I would have done it. It's uh, you know, it's, it looks great on your resume, and the, the classes, the professors are amazing. It's vastly different from what you get here in Belgium. It's much more interactive. It's it's a, yeah, it's a different way of thinking, um, and you learn a lot and you learn it a lot faster than, than you do here, I think. Um, so yeah, it's, it's all about the, uh, the Socratic method. Uh, it takes a while to get used to and you really have to get over your initial shyness. Um, but uh, yeah, once you get into it and once you, you know, have that daily routine of preparing for class, um, you'll be fine. I did have a general idea about what it was, um, 
but it's I mean since we don't have it in, in the university system in Belgium in Belgium it's you listen you listen to a professor and you take notes and then maybe after class you go you know you go up to the professor and you ask him or her questions and then afterwards you go to uh, tutorials and workshops and there that's much more interactive but that's not with the professor directly it's usually with the TA um, so the Socratic method the way I prepared for it is, prepared for it was um, I sat in the library every day and you know and just did the assignments so the professor would say okay read chapters one through four so I went ahead read them uh, looked up whatever I needed to look up and you know jotted down uh, the core tenets of, of each chapter or, or of each each uh, section um, so that I'd least I would at least have a framework um, when I got to class so I, I could so that I could you know easily place uh, questions within that framework um, and hopefully at least give a somewhat decent answer uh, to the professor's question. To be honest, I, I never studied as much as I did, as, as much as I did in, in, in the US. So in, in Belgium, I, you know, I got cracking like a couple of weeks before the exams and just lived in my uh, desk chair. But uh, no, in, in the US, it really, it really forced you to keep up with your assignments and reading every day which was something entirely new to me. I, I mean, I'm, I wasn't the best of students here in, in, uh, in, in Belgium, but uh, I definitely improved in, uh, in the US, so it's a big asset. Start early. That's, I think that's your general, that's a, the best tip I can give you because uh, it takes an amazing amount of time to actually collect all the documents that you need. It's a very um, lengthy process that you need to go to. You, you know, you need to ask this from 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 this person, another document from the university, from the, you know, town hall, whatever. Um, and it just takes a while, uh, especially if you've studied abroad before, like like myself. I studied abroad before, so. I needed recommendation letters from professors abroad, which you know you need to email them or write them and explain to you, explain to them what you're doing and what what you want them to do. Um, so yeah, that's that's uh, the best tip I can give you. Um, doing the TOEFL, uh, I did the internet-based test. Um, as I well, I grew up in the U.S., so for me it was relatively easy. One of the good things that I like about American law schools as to, I don't know, British law schools or whatever, uh, is that they take into account other items than just, you know, your uh, grades or track record at school. I mean, I had good grades. I mean, obviously they wouldn't uh, take on someone who has only mediocre grades, but I mean, I wasn't the top of the top, absolutely not, but I was involved in a lot of other side projects. And I think that's something that, um, uh, I think that's something that U.S. universities look for, uh, someone who is a broadly developed person who has broad interests, uh, who's not just solely focused focused on you know getting 20 out of 20 or whatever. Um, so they're looking more at the personality uh, of of the applicant than you know just his his or her test grades. And that's something that, you know, obviously for me was very beneficial. Uh, but I think it's a very good approach because we did have some, some people who were exemplary students. You know, they all got A pluses, extremely smart, very bright people. But uh, you often see that they're less sociable, um, less connected with the rest of the group. And I don't know, sometimes I fear that you would get less out of the whole experience because, I mean, in the end, the whole experience is not only to learn from, from a different culture, from U.S. culture, or to learn about a different legal system, but to develop yourself more as a person. Especially if you're quite young. I was uh, 23 when I uh, went to the U.S. Um, I mean, you're really young and you really need to, you know, start living on your own, uh, develop yourself and I think that's um, it's it would be a huge waste of money and time to not take advantage of that kind of opportunity uh, and then the motivation letter uh, or essay um, I think I, I think I, I didn't have to write an essay for each uh, application I, I didn't think I had I don't think I had, I had to write one for uh, for Penn Law 
but obviously there's there's always a motivation letter. Um, tip one, change the name of the university. If you're applying to several universities, which I suggest you do, I applied to I think seven or eight different ones, um, which also cost you a sizable sum of money. I think most schools charge a seventy-five dollar application fee. So and then with um, you know, postage costs and whatever, you know, you rack up uh, a slight sum. Either way, um, the essay um, or the motivation letter, I would say look at what kind of school it is and what kind of students that they're looking for. Each school has a different um, personality to it and has, different, um, has a different focus. Uh, I tailored my uh, application in my motivation letter for Penn Law to Penn Law. So what I did was I talked about how I really like the, uh, the, the cross-disciplinary or, or an interdisciplinary approach because I want to do this and this and that. Uh, I've already tried to be an interdisciplinary person before, you know, as my track record shows, and you just list that. Uh, and um, yeah, I think you try to um, show the uh, the committee, uh, the acceptance committee or admittance committee, um, why you would be a good asset to that school. Why would you contribute, uh, or would, would, why would you be a valuable contribution to uh, the LLM community or the law school community community at large? I think that's uh, that's what you need to show them. Als als jullie eraan denken om naar Amerika te gaan om daar een LLM te doen, echt niet twijfelen. Uh, het is een uh, serieuze som geld, maar het is het allemaal waard. Uh, je leert enorm veel toffe mensen kennen van over heel de wereld. Je leert een nieuw uh, rechtssysteem kennen. Het is, uh, in kort was eigenlijk het beste jaar van mijn hele leven. Uh, en uh, ik zou het opnieuw doen, meteen, als ik nog eens de kans zou krijgen.